In this section, we are going to talk about the history and evolution of this blockchain technology. Perfect. Since we have now understood what blockchain technology and what this course is going to offer you, let's look at the brief history of blockchain. Because any technology that you learn, it's very important for you to understand where it all started. That gives us a clear uh, picture of what we are going to uh, look at. Bitcoin, for example, was introduced in 2008. At that point in time, even the founder of Bitcoin did not use the word called as blockchain. You might ask me who is the founder of blockchain or Bitcoin itself. It was a person known as Satoshi Nakamoto. But when I tell you he is a person, take it with a pinch of salt because we do not know if he is a person or she is a person or is it a group of people or a community or an entity. There is no information about this entity called as Satoshi Nakamoto even till now. It has been 12 years from its inception and Bitcoin stays strong. It is a decentralized network and that's the reason even without the founder it is operating in an autonomous manner. Anyway, you'll get to know about all of these things during the later por portions of the section. However, I wouldn't say blockchain is a new technology which got introduced by Bitcoin in 2008. Even before blockchain was introduced, even before Bitcoin was introduced, there were similar technologies being worked upon by scientists. Some of the notable things are one that happened in 1991 by Stuart Haber and Stornetta. They created a concept of cryptographically chained blocks. Sounds very similar to blockchain. And then came in 1992 something called as Merkley trees, which also I would say is a parent to the current blockchain that we have. But they faced a huge issue called as consensus. When you look at multiple computers connected to each other, something called as a distributed network, you need to make all of them agree upon a single thing, a single source of truth. They were able to achieve it, but only with limited number of systems. But once it went beyond, let's say, 25 nodes, 30 nodes, etc., the systems were failing. They were not able to maintain that consensus. And I would say block Bitcoin, the biggest achievement of Bitcoin is that it brought in consensus into the system. But even though you say everything about Bitcoin being wonderful and all of these things, Bitcoin was able to do only one thing in the world. It was having a currency and sending and receiving money to one person in the world to other person. Then came Ethereum in the year 2015. It was found by a person called as Vitalik Buterin. He was a Canadian by birth and he saw this Bitcoin technology. He was amazed by this technology and told, OK, this is a good technology which is being used for as a global currency, right? People are using Bitcoin to send and receive money. Wonderful. But why can't I use this technology for something else also? That's why he created something called as smart contracts through which you can do much more things with blockchain, not only global currency. Then the blockchain technology evolved and went into Hyperledger, which was introduced in 2015 as well. This Hyperledger is a permissioned or enterprise blockchain, I could say. What is this enterprise blockchain? When we look at Bitcoin or Ethereum, right, they have a lot of similarities, a lot of good features like security, transparency, immutability, etc. But the companies, MNCs and the governments also, when they wanted to look at this technology and use it for their advantage, they faced an issue called as transparency. No company in the world would want their entire public to know what is their uh, operating efficiency, what is their profit margin, etc. So they took all the good features that they wanted from blockchain, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, like uh, I could say uh, features like security, immutability, decentralization, etc. But left out this transparency portion. They told only my employees will be able to write data into the blockchain. And that's how they took Hyperledger to the next level. Hyperledger is an open source framework to, to create blockchains. It is managed by Linux Foundation. After all of these, today, 
we are sitting in a world where blockchain can be applied to any system in the world any industry you can see multiple use cases are being born on a daily basis anyway after the foundations you will definitely go through all the use cases exciting use cases that are there in the world today in the world of blockchain we'll jump right in to understand where this started from how do you understand this blockchain technology probably some of the things that i spoke to you up now called as decentralization smart contracts ledger transactions might not be familiar to you it will all get clear when you go through the course let's look at what is this information sharing and how it evolved over time 